Penetration testing and ethical hacking are proactive ways of testing infrastructure defenses and or web applications by performing attacks that are similar to a real attack that could occur on any given time. They are executed in a controlled way with the objective of finding as many security flows as possible and to provide feedback on how to mitigate the risk posed by such flows. When planning to execute a penetration testing project, be it for a client as professional penetration tester or as part of company internal security team, there are aspects that always need to be considered before starting the engagement and that roles of engagement for a pen testing. The term role of engagement sounds intimidating the first time you hear it but don't be alarmed. It means to protect both you as the client and your penetration testers. The role of engagement or ROE are meant to list out the specifics of your penetration testing project to ensure that both the client and the penetration tester working on a project know exactly what is being tested, when it is being tested, and how it is being tested. The ROA stands as the definition of testing being performed to ensure all stakeholders are on the same page. Roles of Engagement or ROA is a document that deals with the manner in which the penetration testing is to be conducted. So what to consider while performing a penetration testing? Some of the directives that should be clearly spelled out in ROA before you start the penetration test are as follows. The types and scope of testing, which ensures that all parties knows exactly what type of testing will be performed, whether it be an external penetration test or internal penetration test or some other form of test. While this seems basic and obvious, this is critical to ensure that what you originally scope out for the project and what you are expecting is exactly what the penetration tester team will execute. The types of testing can be black box, white box, or intermediate gray box, depending on how the engagement is performed and the amount of information shared with the testing team. These are things that can and cannot be done in each type of testing. With black box testing, the testing team works from the view of an attacker who is external to the organization. As the penetration tester starts from scratch, and tries to identify the network map, the defense mechanism implemented, the internet-facing website and services, and so on. Even though this approach may be more realistic in simulating an external attack, you need to consider that such information may be easily gathered from public sources, or that the attacker may be disgruntled employee or ex-employee who already possess it. Thus, it may be a waste of time and money to take a black box approach. If, for example, the target is an internal application meant to be used by employees only. White box testing is where the testing team is provided with all of the available information about the target, sometimes even including the source code of the applications so that little or no time is spent in reconnaissance and scanning. A gray box test then would be when a partial information such as URLs of applications, user level documentations, and or user account are provided to the testing team. Gray box testing is especially useful when testing web applications as the main objective is to find vulnerabilities within the application itself, not in the hosting server or network. Penetration testers can work with user account to adapt the point of view of a malicious user or an attacker that gained access through a social engineering. When deciding on the scope of testing, the client along with the testing team need to evaluate what information is valuable and necessary to protect, and based on that, determine which applications network need to be tested and with that degree of access to the information. Project schedule. This is critical for both parties during the penetration test. The tester need to know exactly when they should or should not be testing, especially if there are pre-arranged testing windows to avoid heavy usage times. Additionally, as the client, you want to know when testing is taking place to ensure that there are no network disruptions and to be confident that any unexpected traffic is not really malicious. This even allow you to exercise portion of the network monitoring and incident response process to make sure controls you have in place are functioning properly. Client contact details. We are agreed that even we take all the necessary precautions when conducting tests, at times 
that these things can go wrong because it involves making computer do nasty stuff, having the right contact information on the client side really helps. A penetration test is often seen turning into denial of service or DOS attack. The technical team on the client side should be available 24 by 7 in case of a computer goes down and hard reset if needed to bring it back online. Penetration testing on a web applications has the advantage that it can be done in an environment that has been specially built for that purpose, allowing the tester to reduce the risk of negatively affecting the client productive assets. Client IT team notification. Penetration testers are also used as a means to check the readiness of the support staff in responding to incident and intrusion attempt. You should discuss this with the client whether it is announced or unannounced test. If it is announced test, make sure that you inform the client of the time and date as well as the source IP address from where the testing or attack will be done in order to avoid the real intrusions attempt being missed by their IT security team. If it is an announced test, discuss with the client what will happen if the test is blocked by an automated system or a network administrator. Does the test end there or do you continue testing? It all depends on the aim of the test, whether it conducted to test the security of the infrastructure or to check the response of the network security and incident handling team. Even if you are conducting an unannounced test, make sure that someone in the escalation metrics knows about the time and date of the test. Web application penetration tests are usually announced. Sensitive data handling during the test penetrations and execution, the testing team will provide with and may also find sensitive information about the company, the system, and or its users. Sensitive data handling needs special attention in the ROE and proper storage and communications measure should be taken. For example, fall disk encryptions on the tester's computer encrypting reports if they are sent by email and so on. If your client is considered under the various regulatory laws such as Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act or HIPAA or even a Data Privacy Act of 2012, the Philippine Data Privacy Law, where only authorized personnel should be able to view the personal user's data. Status Meetings and Reports Communications is the key for a success penetration test. Regular meetings should be scheduled between the testing team and the client organizations and the routine status reports issued by the testing team. The testing team should present how far they have reached and what vulnerabilities have been found up to that point. The client organization should also confirm whether their detection system have triggered any alerts resulting from the penetration attempt. If a web server is being tested and a WAF was deployed, it should have a lag and block attack attempts. As best practice, the testing team should also document the time when the test was conducted. This helped the security team in correcting the lags with the penetration test. Why are roles engagement important to penetration test? Role of engagement, this is the myth of the document and these rules are crucial to reveal in the details as they provide the do's and do not of testing. They contain lot of important projects specific such as special testing parameters, requested rules the testing team should be abide by, and disclosures about testing that can help protect the client such as treatment of sensitive information during the project, how the project status updated will be communicated, emergency contact information, handling of sensitive and critical vulnerabilities, steps on taking if prior compromise is uncovered, security controls impact and specifics, IP address of testing machines for monitoring and whitelisting, requirement for third-party hosting provider approval to test, any scope of target including the IP addresses and the URLs. Any specific compromise goals, for example material and non-public information or a credit card data, specific web forms to be avoided, and lastly approvals, which is the final steps, is a thorough review, update of any requested information and written approval that the information in the ROE is correct. Once this is received, the testing team can begin the assessment based on the content of the document. 
while every role of engagement will be slightly different depending on the firm you are working with. If your penetration testing firm does not have one in place, I highly recommend that you request this structure once for you or you consider switching firms. This document is meant to minimize mistakes and help protect all parties involved. Contracts is an agreement between two parties that create a mutual legal obligation. Some contracts involve significant amount of money. NDE is a non-disclosure agreement. It's an agreement in contracts law that certain information will remain confidential, which prevent discussing any information included in the contract with any non-unauthorized person or party. Kung inyong nagustuhan ng video na ito, pakibahagi sa inyong mga kakilala na nagnanais matuto patungkol sa cybersecurity, infosec, or IT para dadami ang nakakaalam at lalawak ang komunidad ng Pinoy infosec. At para sa inyong katanungan, huwag magatubiling mag-iwan ng mensahe o komento sa ibaba ng video para ay aking masagot sa susunod na video. As always, stay safe and stay secure. Maraming salamat!